smile on your face this time. Last time we, we saw you in the show, you were a little cautious, concerned about the market. Oh, well, we're going to make Trump America. gets elected, and now we're, we're, we're going to make America great again. Well, it's huge. You've changed your whole outlook? We have. So for uh, the Just last... Just based on the election of Donald Trump. Well, look at it this way. For the last seven years, we've had 2% growth against a trend line of 3.5% for the last 50 years. And it's really been carried by unorthodox monetary policy. Now we're going to start adding tighter, a looser fiscal policy against a tighter monetary policy. Those changes are going to have a dynamic effect on growth, EPS, inflation, interest rates across the board. So you're advising your, your clients to do what? Well, for clients that have a two to four year investment horizon, it's time to own stocks and move to full equity positions. Full equity positions. Correct. If you're a short term investor, you have a one to six month horizon, there'll be air pockets. Uh, wait for one of them if it happens. But uh, for long term investors, uh, this is a different landscape to invest in. You feel like we're a little ahead of ourselves or, or not really? Absolutely. Uh, you know, the market's uh, preloaded, possibly you know, every change that's going to occur uh, in the next year. So there's uncertainty on magnitude, timing, scope, implementation. So the market's really gotten ahead of itself in the short run. What, what, what looks attractive to you then? If, you're, if you say, okay, have a full position uh, in the market, in equities, <laughs> what looks attractive? All right, so thematically, I think you start with uh, repatriation and that holiday. And the, the stock you have to look at is Apple. There's 216 billion offshore. Free cash flow is roughly 8.5%, 50 billion a year. And if they repatriate that money, there could be more buybacks and it'll be net positive. Gentlemen? The services side of the business is performing well also. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't they? Yeah. You, you know what I'm talking okay. about, Rich. Don't, Rich, look, don't, so, don't yeah. go. So, Second largest the, the, revenue. The, yeah. Yeah. Let, let, let me building. ask you. If, if you are an investor, and, and I agree with you on the three to five year horizon, that's the right approach to have. But over the one to six month time frame, 2016 seemed about owning bond like proxies, low volatility type names. Going into this year, you think that strategy comes back again if we do see that air pocket you describe? Or what type of names do you want to own in this air pocket you anticipate? All right, so we definitely would not want to own any bond proxies, interest sensitive stocks, uh, because we see higher inflation moving into Q1 as a result of the base effect of inflation, rising wages, health care, owner equivalent rents. So we don't want to be in anything that's inflation sensitive, interest sensitive. We've actually, we were overweight banks, we're now underweight banks. We think they've moved way too far. At some point, look, they traded at three to four times book up in, in 06. Now they went from 0.8 to 1.2 times book. They'll be attractive again and we'll try to get back okay. in. Uh, I'm glad you went there. And let's just have this debate right right here now because you think it's time to maybe hit the pause on the, on the banks, which have gone in your words too far too fast. These guys say no, there, there, is, there is much more room to go for stocks that were so far below book value. Their valuations were so cheap for so long that the good times are going to continue, right? I am mean, putting words in your mouth, but, but that's you, but the gist of it, right? But do, but, do you, but do you really think it's realistic for the majority of people? So, all right, so they've gone too far too fast. Let's say there's a 10 percent pullback. Do you think it's realistic for people to nail the exit and then the reentry? And is it even worth trying, given what the ramifications are for missing that window in which you might yourself get a better price for banks? I mean, do, do you think that that's conducive for, for most people to try to manage a portfolio? No, not okay. from that perspective. Okay. But I think we're going to see a lot of rotation within the market. Okay. So I think technology will come back. I actually think healthcare has been way oversold. And you've got to start looking at where the cheap sectors are. Post the election, it's been energy and financials that have completely outperformed. So I think over the next few months, we're going to start seeing a lot more rotation. And those are the sectors that will outperform the banks and the energy. So I look at some of the plays that you like, and you mentioned the repatriation play, if you will, and, and Apple being at the top of that list. But you also have your eye on some big blue chip companies um, as part of an ETF that probably we never talk about. It's one of the points I brought up earlier about these, the repatriation trade and the buybacks and fueling the stock prices higher of a Boeing, a McDonald's, a Lowe's, AIG, Qualcomm, Mondelez, Biogen. Yeah. Within this ETF, the Power Shares buyback ETF, the PKW, for those of you who may not know exactly the one we're talking about. 
Right, so thematically, repatriation tax holiday leading to more buybacks. This ETF buys companies that have bought back at least 5% of their market cap in the last 12 months. We think it fits that theme. Uh, there's also cash flow stories like uh, Canadian Natural Resources, which uh, they're completing a $24 billion uh, CapEx program in 2018. It's going to zero. Cash flow is going to start surging. At 250,000 barrels a day is going to be their output. They'll start cash flowing two, three, four billion dollars a year uh, over the next three years. You have an energy play, Floor, FLR. Oh, well, so Floor is a Make America Great Again small cap. It's an eight billion dollar company in power, infrastructure, services, mining, and. Uh, what, what's happening there is if you believe in the infrastructure story and the rebuilding of it, 55% of their revenues is domestic, 1.8% uh, dividend yield, and a free cash flow yield of about 7%.